Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Legends Only. My name is T. Kyle. And I'm Bradley. And this is your weekly pop culture podcast where we talk about Legends Only. Nothing like listening to the Legends Only podcast. <laughs> Nothing like it. Nothing, Nothing like, like it. it. Shout out to Eva. What a nice thing she did. Yeah, I cash apped her $10. <laughs> <laughs> Self promo marketing plan. That is extremely uh, Derek Barry. Who hashtagged this? <laughs> and it's just Derek Barry for All Stars 3 or whatever yeah. the hashtag was. Who made this for us? <laughs> I know now I can't say that we have no marketing because this yeah. is our first investment. This is our $40 million investment. Yep. Yep. Mm hmm. Spotify shaking. It's um, true. <laughs> there certainly is nothing like it. There certainly isn't. And there's certainly nothing like, thank God. Ugh, finally. Murgatrude is out of retrogory. <laughs> <laughs> the, what, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Gatorade is out of Murgatrude. <laughs> What is Murgatrude? <laughs> I don't know. I just keep saying it. I'm not well, as you know. We've yeah. had a long discussion. Health issues aplenty. Ugh. Men. Worry about it later. <laughs> Cry societal, about it later. Societal collapse. But at least Mercury is out of retrograde. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I'm free. Worst experience of my fucking life. <laughs> From Trisha Paytas tweet. Yeah, we tried to explain it on the live chat. Shout out to everyone who joined us on the live chat. LC16. Oh, yes. LC16 which was, was last half week. Astrological. Mm -hmm, it was. And we decided or we discussed the approximate amount of how astrological are you? How mm -hmm. much do you believe? Um, and we all decided that we're kind of. Yeah, we're in the middle. Yeah. And. Baby. And we talked about what Mercury out of retrograde means and sort of sort of figured out the answer. Mm -hmm. and, we'll find out. Yeah. We'll see if <laughs> she's really gone. Yeah. Because I feel like she's lingering. <laughs> I don't feel. Well, it's uh, there's a period of time in yeah. between. It's not so stop start. Yeah. I forget what it's called. The in between. Yeah. There's a word for it. Transit. Uh, something. Out, out from under. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> Mercury is out from under. I don't want to think about. Thank God. I did feel like it hit. There was like six planets yeah. out of alignment. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what else is out of alignment now? What? A big ass asteroid. <gasps> they got her. They got her, gal. <laughs> they got her. She flopped off the charts. I got you. <laughs> I don't know how we've incorporated space into this podcast as like a segment. Yeah, like an alien. It's just like, you know, Queens of Pop and the Sun. Mm -hmm. Well, well, it does affect things, you know. It does. The pull, the push <laughs> of the tides. <laughs> the tide is high, and we're moving on to the NASA DART mission. <laughs> What is wild to me about this was just how casual it was. Yes. Like last week, there's so much. Ha I mean, there's a lot that's going on. Yeah. All the time. There's so much hate in this world. <laughs> yes. There's a lot going on. And then we finished recording and I upload and then NASA's like, <laughs> by the way, we blew up a comet or a meteor. I was like, excuse me? When was there a meteor? Yes. Well, if you're on Space Talk like I am and you follow the four or five space ladies who tell me about these things, I did know that this was coming in the coming weeks, that NASA was going to thwap an asteroid with some space gear and see if it knocks it out of alignment so that if we ever have a life-threatening asteroid coming at us, we can knock it potentially out of orbit. How do we knock it so it hits faster <laughs> is what I want to know. Okay. <laughs> How can you a align giant magnet right to make sure that it comes at us <laughs> real hard? <laughs> Just like, please. What are you waiting for? <laughs> I'm here. Release me. <laughs> Painting a giant X across <laughs> the continent. <laughs> Take us out of our misery. I know. I... Uh... 
Well, n- you'll be relieved to know that it did work. Should you wish for the humanity to continue, we did get confirmation that it thwacked the asteroid just off kilter enough to change its course or whatever. Hmm. So she she flopped. <laughs> My favorite was that Pop Crave tweeted about it. And yeah. so everyone was just like... <laughs> the video. <laughs> Cardi could never. <laughs> Mustin. When will Mustin. Nikki when. <laughs> and Taylor. Yeah, your fave off the charts. Yeah. <laughs> Love when Pop Crave tweets about pop culture, but also way more when they tweet about like serious science and political issues. Mm-hmm. The replies are fantastic. Yeah, so NASA... The video for this... The video. It's just blank space, if uh-huh. you will. And mm-hmm. then all of a sudden just hits the meteor. Man on the moon promo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just hits it just enough to make it move. Make the world move. <laughs> <laughs> I love the tweet that was like, this is for the T-Rex. <laughs> and it was the last still of right before it hit the meteor. No. Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, I guess it's what a relief. But also, it's so insanely like out of Armageddon, out of a science fiction movie. Like, what do you mean we just smacked a piece of space rock and it moved? I know. On a Tuesday morning. On a Tuesday. (laughs) Good morning, America. For the first (laughs) time ever, we will be thwacking an asteroid out of orbit. Makes me think there's something more that we don't know. Mm. What are they preparing us for? <laughs> I well, that's what I said. I was like, midnight's. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> They're concerned about midnight's impact. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if we throw an unsold copy of Bionic at it, it'll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god! Yeah, midnight's still being teased, but we'll get to that at some point. Yeah. <sighs> well. <clears throat> Speaking of two colliding (laughs) legends, (laughs) Sparks Flew and emo icons, emo pop punk icons collided in the most unexpected of ways over the weekend. That was such a good transition. (laughs) Look at that. (laughs) We didn't even write that one down. We didn't, no. There was a concert over the weekend? No, last week. Weekday. Weekday. Yeah. Yeah. It was what after time. It was after the asteroid. Yes. Yeah. Demetria Lovato performing the Holy Favuk tour. <laughs> Is it really called Favuk? <laughs> no, I just say that. Oh. I think I think it's to avoid like oh, issue. censorship. And also it's good for SEO. Cause then oh, cause not everyone's unique. searching. Yeah. Unique? unique? <laughs> I have to add that to the soundboard, but I would probably go to Parkwood Jail. You would. Yeah. Get a good lawyer. <laughs> that you could use. Yes. Demi performed on the Holy Favuk tour, and who came out from stage left? I didn't see it coming. Nobody saw it coming. Nope. Ashley. This is a place for legends. Simpson Ross is here. Not to perform Pieces of Me. Not even to perform Boyfriend or L-O-V-E. But la la. Bop. Such a bop. Just coming out casually on a... As casually as throwing space mechanics at an asteroid. Just came right out. I will say the way that she ran out... Yeah. ...was very meteor hitting the Earth. It was. It was... To- <laughs> <laughs> you make me wanna scream! <laughs> It was. Oh, it me back. It was. It was it kind me of back a. To my youth. It was a reverse Warholian hoedown dance from SNL. Honestly, it was like she reclaimed it. Yeah. And she leapt back onto the stage, and everyone freaked out. I did think the whole time I was like, "How many of these teens know who this is?" You know. True. I wondered. I do. They know Lala. No. I guess I probably not. No. But they it was, probably know boyfriend. Hmm. Maybe. Like, I think everybody might know Pieces of Me because of the scandal, but I don't know anymore. Teens, did you know kids. this? Hey, kids. Hey, kids, have you streamed autobiography have you streamed today? Lala? <laughs> Let us know in the comments. I was, I was thinking of that the whole time, but she was, sounded great as ever. She was so mm. into it. She's a ginger now. She's a ginger. Your hair is really looking a lot like mine. I'm, I think it's kind of 
the statement for fall. I kind of feel like it's the mm. move. Maybe it was too ahead of its time for certain people. I I just Chucky, Ashley, mm. you. I kind of feel like the <laughs> tastemakers of today are kind of leading the pack here. Just saying. Yeah, looked good. Very cool to see that happen. And Demi obviously was inner glory, pop punk inspiration. Mm-hmm. Ashley, we'd love to see it. We, we would love to see a Simpson tour. I know. We talked about this on the live as well. Jessica Simpson's been dropping some strange hints. At something. At something. And Ashley clearly is still musically interested, at least, to do that. Ashley teased on her Instagram, like, oh, I have a surprise for you, LA, before this. But I thought it was tied to whatever Jessica was teasing. Oh. Well, hopefully they do a a joint Simpson X Simpson tour. Remixed, reimagined, still Still rejoicing. If you know, you know. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Pa rum pa pum pum. (laughs) Pa rum pa pum pum. Nothing like it. What would you call that that Ashley does with her vocal? It's like a um me- melting. <gasps> Ooh, she, I love that Paris Hilton song. Melts. Oh, yep. Deep yeah. cut. Deep. If you know, you know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. She did it on this. She's like scream. scream. Yeah, she melts. <laughs> Hot. <laughs> <laughs> well, there were. Some other concerts. There's a lot of concerts happening right now. There are. There are. I'm seeing Kai go on Thursday. Oh my god! Hope I make it. Oh Knock god. on wood. I'm That's seeing... why I stayed in this weekend. I was supposed to go see Ben Bomer, and I was like, I'm not getting Cornova before mm. this. Gotcha. I'm seeing Miss Jessie Ware. I'm gonna hope we don't get Cornova at that. What's your pleasure? <laughs> what's What's your temperature? COVID test? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's your temperature? God. Well. Last week, also, yeah, we talked about this in the live chat, but I saw Pet Shop Boys as the LGBTs of NYC were seeing Carly Rae Jepsen at Radio City Music Hall, and she did the So Nice tour, which very ahead of its time coming out <laughs> before the for album. the album. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, she did a new song off the album, I hear, and she did Thinking, uh, Talking to Yourself, and the latest Bop speech. Beach House. Mm. <laughs> and she also referenced an album that's coming out. Get a good lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Carly Rae did acknowledge that her album will be released on October 21st. And she said, quote, it should be easy to remember because it's the same day Taylor Swift is putting out hers. Mm-hmm. And she did like a fake, like outraged move. <laughs> but she she was just joking. But it's still, there's probably a hint of annoyance there. Yeah. (laughs) Well, they should both be afraid because Megan Trainor's album is out the same day, which (gasps) both of them seem to be ignoring. Yeah, well, who'll who'll be laughing when Megan Trainor featuring her TikTok comes out on October 21st? She's quite the TikTok girl right now. She is. Yeah. With the help of uh, Chris Olsen. Oh. The best, you know, the, the boy who's in all the videos, formerly of the couple. Chris and Ian, right? Oh, right. Well, he's like quite the TikTok consultant now. He shows up in all the girls' TikToks, showing them how to do the trends, mm. but be relatable and chill. I'm ready for this era of TikTok to end. I can't. I was going to say, I'm on a different TikTok. <laughs> yeah. My FYP is unhinged, Vine energy, mashups, and I know. mixes. We'll get into it we'll later. We'll get into it. Well, Midnight's and Carly Rae Jepsen, Loneliest. The loneliest time. Time. Midnights. Midnights. Edition. Hey. October twenty first. Countdown. Let it begin. And why can't they just tour together? Mm. Would be so nice. Oh well. You yeah. don't support women. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll have to talk about <laughs> Taylor in a bit because she's also been um revealing more new song titles. New song title. Anti hero. Yeah, and she actually talked about this one. Mm-hmm. She did a completely different thing. She did like a sit down interview about it. And she was talking about how this album, this song is about things she hates about herself. And don't pity her, but being at her level of fame has made her feel like not a person at times. I get it. Yeah. It's probably going to be an interesting song. Yeah. And it's not even track five, which notably, according to Swift lore, is like usually the heavy hitters of the albums, like emotionally. Mm. Mm. Someone say emotion. Emotion. Oh, 
<sighs> well, see you in three weeks for that review. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. And in keeping with concerts, the live action didn't stop there. We also had Lizzo performing in Washington, D.C., breaking out the 200-year-old flute and performing it for the first time in 200 years. Yeah. And it belonged to the uh, museum. You know that one. Yep. Mm-hmm. Love it. The I'm, I'm always going to that. Uh, it was at the Library of Congress, and it was escorted on stage by a police escort. And she took it, and she was like, it's like playing out of a wine glass. Oh, she. Yes. It was a crystal flute. She played it for a bit and then handed it back to the police escort and also played it at the Library of Congress. And they did like a full proper showing of it. There. Yeah. She's such a good flute player. What are they called? A flutist. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. She's a trained flutist. She's classically trained, in fact. She like went to college for it. Which is why the the backlash to it is even funnier. Yeah, I don't understand all the backlash. Well, I see everyone talking about the backlash. Yeah. But I, mean, I don't know what's going on. It's just like a, a handful of racist morons who are like, oh, she's degrading it by by twerking and playing the flute in concert or whatever. I mean, it's, it's just... Spoils. She just stood there, watched the video. She's playing the flute. What yeah. are they talking about? Well, I mean, it's just... Nobody cared about the flute to begin with. Not my flute. Not my flute. <laughs> it's fake outrage. Obviously, if if Betsy Sue performed it at the inauguration, <laughs> nobody would have a problem. <laughs> it would probably see, it reminds me of that TikTok sound that's the Titanic theme, but off key. <laughs> <laughs> That's you, Betsy Sue. Yeah, that's you, Betsy Sue. <laughs> or who is the only person he could get to perform at the inauguration? Remember that? Like, there was that week period. I have iced. Oh. That day was my grandma's funeral. Oh, well. Horrible day in history. Okay, well, that is, did not mean to. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, did you have to bring it up? <laughs> Jackie Ivancho. That's who performed. What? I remember that he was desperately trying to get anybody to perform and that everyone was saying no. And so he ended up getting like a, the voice finalist. No, America's Got Talent singer, 16 year old. <laughs> That's who they wouldn't have cared. Play at the flute. Slay. <laughs> anyway, nobody's actually mad. They're just fake bored. outrage. They're bored. Fling that flute at the fucking asteroid. <laughs> That's what's happening to it next. I just think it's funny how flutes like how did someone think let me make this thing and then blow into it with buttons that's fascinating i actually feel like i don't know why i think this but i think i could come to it pretty quickly on a desert island with being bored because don't you you know when you like have a straw and there's a hole in it like i have a straw right here yeah like i feel like and then it makes like a different sound when you're like sucking it or Um, blowing it what do you mean so like yeah yeah Diet Cokes everywhere. That didn't really sound yeah, like you just anything. Made a mess, but look at him disgracing the straw. Can you do something like this where you're like, yeah? Just feel like if you're bored and you wow, had like an a artist. had like a straw like object when you were sucking on it, <laughs> <laughs> you could notice when you press down on it, it makes different sounds. <gasps> you could do it with acorns. Remember that as a kid? Oh yeah, yeah. You can make a little whistle with an acorn. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So basically, I'm saying it's easy, and I could have invented the flute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. Anyway, I don't know how we got on this top. Oh, Lizzo playing the flute and selling out Madison Square Garden. Oh, that's right. This week, the special tour. That's I know. I feel was... bad. I'm missing all these concerts. There's but... so many concerts happening right now. I know someone's gonna call me out. I can already hear the comment that's like, "Oh wow, you're skipping all these concerts to go see a man." I mean, I did that. I saw Pet Shop Boys instead of Carly, which was uh, sacrilege to some. But I stand by my decision 1,000%. It was a great show. If you do get the chance to go, they're still touring right now with New Order. It's fantastic. But turns into an EDM show, two-thirds in. You saw Paul Oakenfeld. Uh, Paul Oakenfeld DJ. I wish he did Faster Kill Pussycat. However, he did do like 80s classics. This is a place for legend. Yes. We do let a couple men inside. Inside. Well, <laughs> yeah. 
Not recently, well, but yes. Yeah. You know who's not getting inside? No. Of pride. <laughs> I don't know how we've gotten on this topic, but it did. It you did tweeted make the about it. All right, well, I saw your quote tweet. <laughs> That's why she's in the note doc. <laughs> I have Another to viral stop. quote I have tweet. To stop. I have to log out. Brad dragged Tina Dunham <laughs> this week. <laughs> Me and every other gay on t- on Twitter, to be honest. But I will also give her this. It's a perfect cringe tweet. It's like so bad. It's instantly Hall of Fame. Mm hmm. I thought this one yeah. was fake news. Definitely. I it's, was like, this is a fake tweet. This is... She's getting dragged totally again. Fake it's fake. Worthy. No, it's real. Yeah. So Lena Dunham tweeted, <laughs> When I go, I want my casket to be driven through the NYC Pride Parade with a plaque that reads, She wasn't for everyone, but she was for us. Who can arrange? The chutzpah. The sheer gall. I mean, who is having that conversation? <laughs> I love the delusion of it. I'm kind of obsessed with it. It's actually funny. We have all these conversations about no kink at pride, no what at pride, no, you know, no this, no that. I think everyone, no Lena Dunham, no Lena Dunham, pride. Dunham pr- <laughs> casket at pride was like on board. Well, won't, you tell, <laughs> won't you tell everybody what that is? <laughs> Add this to the Hall of Fame yeah. of like flop pride moments <laughs> yeah. with Kelly Osborne, the Starbucks tweet. Do you oh remember that? Oh my God, yes. This is on the same level. It is. If you don't know what that is, Kelly Osborne tweeted that Starbucks wouldn't let her in to pee. So she like peed in a shoe. Didn't yeah. she pee something like that? I pissed myself. Yeah, and everyone's I pissed myself. Like, They're like, okay. Right. <laughs> you could have gone to Borders or something. I don't know. Nobody was killed. Nobody was killed at Stonewall. <laughs> Never mind, Borders isn't open anymore. <laughs> Barnes and Noble might not be either. I actually Toys went down a wormhole about Barnes and Noble. They're redesigning their whole thing. To what? They're trying to not sponsor. People, yeah, they're trying to get people back in the stores because they're one of the last remaining like giant realtor real retailers <laughs> up against Amazon. So they're trying to like make it a more cozy Borders esque experience. Hmm. The girls are. The Amazon bookstore closed in um, Columbus Circle, too. Oh, Nobody's reading anymore. Nobody's going physically. That's yeah. the thing. Nobody's, yeah, everyone's on TikTok. Me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's true. Nobody's nobody's opening a book these days. No. I know. Everyone's... Open your minds and your hearts instead. Yeah. A little more of that. How about that? How about that? Yeah. I don't care if you read. No. Stop reading each other. Yeah. Open your hearts to each other and carry Lena Dunham's casket <laughs> through the pride parade. Yeah. <laughs> Open your heart to, to me. me. Well, you know who might be opening their hearts or something else. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't blame her. I would too. Wouldn't blame both of them. Nope. I love it for both. Yep. She's our favorite world traveler and she's landed in New York. Miss Dula Peep. Spotted. La Pipa (laughs) has been spotted. With Trevor Noah, formerly of The Daily Show. That also happened this week. Late breaking news mid live chat. Saw the tweet go up. And then all of a sudden it became a trending topic worldwide. Leaving after seven years. Daily Show. Yeah. Happened hours after the do a kiss. One kiss is all it takes. Yep. That you leave your show. I mean, yeah, so... Did he quit immediately, or is yes. it, like, at the end of this year? She basically was like, do you want to go on tour with me? And he was like, I'm, go- oh, I'm gone. Somebody Wait, can so take- he is, like, done already? Oh, no, I think, it, I think it finishes, like, whatever the contract is or whatever. Oh, okay. But, yeah, he's leaving the show. I don't think it's abrupt, but I'm unclear. However, wow, so they were spotted... Wow, two down this year. Yeah. A couple more to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think the late night no format. Comment. I think the late night format will just shift in a way of like we have entertainers on TikTok and stuff. I just think it's going to be something. It's going to be something, but the format is changing mm-hmm. for sure. But yeah, so Dua was spotted in the, in the Lower East Side, I think, or the East Village with Trevor. They had dinner together. There were mixed eyewitness reports of some, maybe some extended hand holding or mo- maybe kissing. Or just a kiss goodbye, unclear. Page six has been putting out more reports that they're into each other. I like it for both. 
This is a hot couple. It's a hot couple. I'm just saying. Yes. This is a hot couple. It's a hot couple. I like it for both. I think this could be good moves for both of them. I don't know what Trevor is doing next, but if he wants to, you know, go on tour as her backup dancer or whatever the case may be, we support it. Also, like a fun love dance album from her would be hot. Yes. Yeah. Confessions on a daily show floor. (laughs) (laughs) Do we think anyone's going to take over for him? I think so. I don't know that the brand is so obsolete that nobody sh- that they'll let it go. Like I feel like somebody's going to get it. Yeah. They could keep it in house and honestly like Samantha B could make a return. Oh, yeah. Something like that. I think of like the the good old days of Daily Show and all of the correspondence they had. You never know. It could be any comedian. Amber Ruffin. Oh. Should take over. Could be Amber Ruffin. Ooh. I love her. You never know. Well, we'll have to wait and see. Could be Roz. <laughs> <laughs> Which one from TikTok or Monsters Inc.? Both. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Co hosts. Oh, that tweet, by the way, also went around. Oh, which one? So there was a tweet from Mark. Hi, Mark. <laughs> Hey, Mark. That says, in my mind, this is a pair of podcast hosts, and it's Mike and Sully from Monsters, Inc. And I was like, well, <laughs> kind of. And I was like, I feel more like a Roz from Monsters, Inc. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'm the short one, but with more hair. Yeah, they need a swap. Yeah. But yeah, I thought it was funny. But I feel like Roz. Yeah. What's out, skank? That was pretty good, wasn't it? That was pretty on point. Add it to your, add it to your impressions. List. What if I just talked like this for the rest of the episode? Well, you're talking normal now. Talk with a voice. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> just put on my T Kyle voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's next on the dot? Ew, what? That's really good, actually. That's, That's a really, really good spot Roz impression. <gasps> oh my god, Pixar, call me. I need money. I need health insurance. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, I'm desperate. I'm gonna, you'll be I'm a little desperate, fi- Pixar. Little fish with that voice. <gasps> Ah, oh, my dream. In Finding Nemo my 3. My dream is to be a little ugly fish with googly eyes. Uh-huh. Call me Pixar. I'm like, not kidding. I really need health insurance. <laughs> <laughs> this is a desperate cry for help. <laughs> Wazowski. <laughs> uh. <laughs> when I go, I want my casket carried through. <laughs> I want mine carried through a hibachi restaurant. And I want them to do little onion volcanoes around me. (laughs) The flavor. Anyway, where were we? Anyway. Well, speaking of, there's no transition here. Actually, well, the video kind of reminds me of Dua's video for new rules, to be honest. The next video we'll talk about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It does. So after much... Teasing in anticipation, the video for Britney and Elton's Hold Me Closer is here. She does not make a cameo. Nope. But there is dancing. Tiny dancers. There were dancers. There were dancers. Uh, Very um, emotional, interpretive dancing. Mm -hmm. Lincoln Center vibes. (laughs) Yeah. Lincoln Center vibes. If you know, you know. Yeah, definitely. Very pretty. Ballet. Uh Mm Uh-huh. Oh, I thought you were going to... What is the one that they always advertise during Chinese New Year? I forget the the name of that one. You know that one, though? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I know the posters. Yes. Anyway, it was a beautiful... Finding Nemo on Ice. Finding Nemo on Ice. Only Closer video. Yeah, it's pretty. It's nice. It's a video. It's a video. It mm-hmm. has visuals, and yep. it lasts for the entirety of the song from beginning to end. There it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like this is the end of the Hold Me Closer era already. Yeah, I think this is it. And that's okay. Oh, you know what? It's not. There are remixes coming. Oh. Yes. I think there's already screenshots of like what's coming. I think it was like maybe P Now, the, the, the same. Oh, Bob. Yeah. I think. I forget who the other names, but I think there's a remix pack incoming. Hmm. So, the T Kyle remix. No, because they contacted you. I got a takedown yes, on Twitter from. You did. My fave, even though I have her blocked. You're, of course, referring to the RIAA rep. Yes, I'm not going to name her because I don't want to get sued for defamation. Get a good lawyer. Um, Get a good lawyer. (laughs) 
But yeah, I did get taken down. I posted like a, oh, what if I did a remix? Sue me closer. And posted like a little clip. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, slay. And then Litigious. copyright taken down, suspended for a day. <laughs> But then they're doing a remix package. What the fuck is that all about? Yeah, well. One day, someone will call me instead of sue me. (laughs) (laughs) Call me instead of take down. Well, it's not this week. One day. Yeah. My BB Rexa remix is doing well. She would be the one to actually appreciate her. Yes, you did. You added her. Yes. I'm glad you did that. She would appreciate it. She wouldn't Mm -hmm. take you down. One step closer. <laughs> One step closer. Yeah, it's a court. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we'll see if there's anything else, but. I'm trying. We'll get there. We'll get there. We have more. Well, the fashions in Hold Me Closer were um, quite pretty. Bright. Colorful. Mm-hmm. Vibrant. And it certainly was no shortage of fashion this past week at the. Paris Fashion Week, Paris. Milan Fashion Week, London Fashion Week. So much fashion. So much fashion. So much fashion. I think it's time for a segment we you like know, we to like call. To, um, we like to talk about fashion. Dude, we love, I, yeah. I love fashion. There's actually a lot of fashion to talk about there this week. Is. From Paris. Paris. Will always Milan. be known as the gays who talked about fashion mm-hmm. in Paris. We, that's what we're known for on this podcast. Hit it. Hi, fashion. <laughs> so editorial. Guys, this is awesome. This is a billboard. This is super high fashion. Oh my God, that's so high fashion. So high fashion. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had quite a few stars, statements, legends hitting the runway, including to kick it all off, to be honest, the legend herself, Cher, closing the Balmain Spring Summer 23 show looking stupendous in this bodysuit. Just amazing. Yeah. A slay. I have a confession. Oh no. What? I didn't really think this was a slay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I I don't mm, it's fine though. What what did you not like the outfit? I felt like the pattern uh-huh was just like a blob. Okay. But yeah. it's fine. Also to the three people out there who played League of Legends, uh-huh. I can't unsee Kaiza. She looks like Kaiza. Okay. If you know, you know. I feel like <laughs> it's like Wendy when she's like, clap if you care. And <laughs> the whole room is silent, but there's one person. There's one person who's yeah. got your back. It's like Andrea in the back. I know she's, she's no, she gets it. Shout out to Andrea, icon. Well, it was a marble spandex bodysuit. She wore... Out on the runway. It looks like a dinosaur belly. Mm. You know what I mean? Like how dinosaurs have like yes. that thing. Yeah. Yeah. I liked it. But it's Cher. Like she's iconic. Exactly. But yeah. She was strong enough to hit the, <laughs> the runway. So there was plenty more actually. Plenty more action, including the Bella Hadid moment that I think is probably the most viral. This was a slay. This was Bella Hadid at Coperni fashion show during Paris Fashion Week, getting her dress painted on her. In real time. In real time. You have to go to Twitter and watch this whole video or wherever it is. It's everywhere. Mm -hmm. This was so slay. This was very slay. Now, of course, being the fashionista that I am, obviously, it did immediately harken back. And many people made this comparison. It's probably the most obvious comparison to... Shalom Harlow at Alexander McQueen in 1999 when he did the dress that had the robots painting it live. She was twirling and it was a completely dramatic, incredible moment. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's I saw some people saying ripoff. It's not ripoff. It's different technology, different aesthetic. The idea of live fashion on the runway is extremely exciting to me always. This was a show. Yes. There was also one in like 2006 or so where I sound like, I sound like the devil wears Prada monologue. I think you'll recall the 2006 (laughs) runway when the lensed by lensed by where there's one where um, the models would step under falling water and the water would create a new outfit as well. Wasn't that on project runway? They did do that too. Where he sewed in the ink packet. Yes. 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 I believe, or I don't know who it was. I forget. 
There was also one where they had necklaces that bled down and created, you know, the color on the. So it's happened art, before. I love we fashion. love a live art fashion moment. I love a show. I love a spectacle. I love art and pop together. <laughs> I, oh, somebody no. should <laughs> do some sort of album about that. Obviously iconic. <laughs> But yes, this Bella Hadid moment truly was pretty stunning, in my opinion. And the outfit up close was like so cool looking. Yeah. And then how she like cut the sleeves. And then I was just like, how did that not fall off? I know. And the music was good, too. It was good, too. That was some like dark ambient, like really. Ooh, that would be fun to do. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I love a spectacle. Love a stunt. There was also the Balenciaga which had Kanye opening, controversial, and it was mud. Did you see that? Yeah, that was that was interesting. a choice. It was a choice. Was that actual real mud? Mm-hmm. Stomping, down, stomping down the mud. Hmm. Yep, there was that. There was BB looking slay. Was she in <gasps> Las Vegas? Sable Rexa. Sable Rexa. She, queen of the pool table. That picture of her on the pool table. Yep. Black hat suit uh-huh. for some festival, like JBL. Yeah, it was some festival. Speakers, maybe? Yeah. Not sponsored. No. But my brother does have them. They're good. Okay. Not sponsored, though. Um, And by the way, I did get a DM that's like, why do I always say not sponsored? Yeah, why? Because it's not. Oh. So, like, you know how Kim just got sued for posting that thing? Oh, which I'm confused about because unless Pop Crave posted... So... Clearly, it couldn't have been the same thing, but Pop Crave posted that Kim's being sued for $1.2 million for promoting Ethereum without properly disclosing. But like the screenshot they showed, the ad or the, the story said hashtag ad at the bottom. So I'm confused unless that wasn't what Kim posted. Yeah, I don't really know. Because I thought that would be implied then. I don't know. But maybe it wasn't what Kim posted. I didn't. I didn't give it a click, so that's just no. me speculating, and probably the answer is right there, and I'm just not looking. But yeah, she she got that. She, mm-hmm. she I mean, it's a drop in the bucket to her. She's like a billionaire, so that's like a, a small inconvenience. But yeah, yeah, we we need to disclose all of our sponsorships. Mm-hmm. So so far, it's uh, none. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I did get a DM. Uh, shout out to the user who I also posted on my story who told me to stop talking about finance <gasps> yes. and stocks or mm. what was it? And I just want to stop s- talking about finance on the pod. Yeah. For the 15 maybe seconds that I've ever referenced it in passing, like, like telling you to, I don't know, have a retirement fund. If that was too triggering, I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and I'm also concerned. That that was like if you made it sound like I spend forty minutes on the topic. Yeah, I texted you. I was like, "What did we talk about finance? Like, I, what? I don't know." But now we're doing it more, and I feel like they're probably like smashing their head against the wall right now. Yeah, I'm gonna get another sternly worded DM. It's fine. It's the least. it's like the DM that I get where someone's telling me to stop posting Chucky. Oh, they're like please stop posting Chucky. Well, and I'm like Wendy. Where I'm like, I know we get plenty of DMs. That was probably the no. the most. <laughs> The tamer of, of yeah. many. So uh, I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, but not sponsored. Anyway, next week um, we'll be talking about investments and funds, hedge funds. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Everyone needs something to fall asleep to. Um, okay. No, but I say not sponsored because when I give a review of something, mm-hmm. you know it's like genuine. Right. And you're, I feel like I have a very good track record with my recommendations. You're the Jeffree Star of recommendations. Wow. Of, yeah. Miss Jeffrey's making quite the comeback on TikTok. Yeah. Everyone's just like, we always trust your reviews. He just dragged, I watched him drag the Gucci blush. Not worth it for $50. Not Jeffrey Star approved. Because you know what? He's rich. He has his own makeup line. He doesn't have to lie for PR packages and stuff. There's a point. There mm-hmm. is. Yeah. Makes sense. Just like Bethany. Yeah. It's like they, they have, crack me up. They have nothing to lose, really. They can be as mean as they want. They don't care if they're on the PR list. True. It kind of makes sense. What am I? What am I going to review? I don't know yet. Protein bars, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like that's. Could you imagine if I came on here and I started promoting like workout clothes or like iconic a gym? Yeah. Everyone would be like, "What?" <laughs> no one would use the code. <laughs> like T Kyle promoting a protein shake. Are you kidding? 
yeah, not sponsored, but I do love the pure protein bars. Anyway. Oh, those are good, actually. They're the best bang for your buck protein-wise. That's all I'll say on the matter. (laughs) (laughs) Bang for your buck. Stop talking about finances. Finance. So sorry. (laughs) Oh, where are we going with this? Oh, fashion. Fashion? Oh. Yeah. Late breaking news. Yes. uh Uh-oh, what happened now? Beyonce. Oh. Oh, scared me for a second. She might not promote. She missed the Grammy deadline. Did you see that tweet? For Renaissance? She missed the visual Grammy deadline. Oh. So now she can't be nominated for visual media when she does, if she does drop the visual um, for this past year. Um, But instead, she gave us a Tiffany & Co. Summer Renaissance themed visual that honestly looks as good as a music video. That is sponsored. What? She, Tiffany? Well, she's sponsored by Tiffany. Oh, she is sponsored by Tiffany. I was like, we got a Tiffany spawn? I want one of those. Everyone's got those fucking Tiffany bracelets. Oh. They're like $6,000 and people just casually. Anyway. For a bracelet? Oh, yeah. This was $20 from. Yeah. <laughs> it's from <obsidian>. City. Yeah. <laughs> I got it from a spiritual shop. <laughs> I love that. Slave. <sighs> Yes, but this summer renaissance visual is uh, honestly as good as a music video, in my opinion. She's having a ball. I mean, to see her actually sing some of the words was like, oh, she's acknowledging acknowledging yeah. renaissance. But yeah, it's been a month and a half, two months? Two months. Now, I always feel that she's got a plan, but I will say the plan is is taking its time. You know, it said see you soon with the with the visual and... She, she was waiting for Mercury to yeah. go out of retrograde. It's possible. Yeah. Yeah. But we have been waiting a minute. It would be good if we could get those visuals. But, you know, this was just a nice little reminder of the incredible album. And hopefully we will get that soon. And she looked fantastic. There were some outfits she was serving. The girls were enjoying it on Discord. Question for the room. Question for the culture. Does anyone else still, even two months later, have a hard time spelling the word renaissance? Or is it just me? I'll let the the people respond to you in the, the Discord. Yeah. I also, um, are you aware that the fan base has unofficially dubbed the horse Renee? No. They spell it R E N A I G H, like Renee, <laughs> like nay, like a horse. <laughs> because Renee made an appearance in the Tiffany ad and they're like, oh, Renee's there. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> it's really cute. I love that. Radar Horse and Renee. Right. Yes. The girls. The girls. <laughs> Just hanging out in the stables. Yeah. Eating hay. The Renaissance Barn. <laughs> Sponsored by Coles. What does Renee say? Hey, Miss Carter. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, no. Speaking of Beyonce, we actually have to talk about her in a new segment. Well, not a new segment, but a next segment. A newer segment for her. A newer segment for her. She's, you know, new to the platform. Yes. I think it's time we have a little TikTok TikTok talk. Yes. One of our new faves, the hottest producer remixer on the scene, Amorphous. One of his many mashups lately has been Plastic Off the Sofa and Solange's Cranes in the Sky. Mm -hmm. Noticed by Tina. Noticed by Miss Tina. Mm -hmm. Knowles Lawson. And Beyonce herself posted Amorphous Mashup on TikTok. This is major. This is huge. Major. I mean, he's ticked all the boxes all over the internet. Oh, the legends. I mean, in this year, he's had the incredible Butterfly remix, which is actually, it genuinely goes off. So good. The mixes and mashes, the working with Brandy, working with Kelly Rowland. I mean, truly... We do need him to do something with Michelle now. That's like the missing piece. We break the dawn. We break the Amorphous dawn. Amorphous remix oh mashup. God. Hello, heartbreak, Amorphous. I'm ready. But yeah, just another Brock's candy corn. <laughs> Brock's... The amorph. <laughs> that's that's me. That's my mashup. That would yes. Oh, that would be. You know, delight. we need a little low brow to to make the high brow. Middle brow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I try. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, speaking of brows, actually, this is a good segue. <laughs> Somebody who does brows all the time on TikTok. Oh. The fucking brows. Yep. Michaela, after making all these headlines on the internet, Mm -hmm. is back on TikTok. And she kicked it off with, I think, what we recommended, which was a joke. Yep. She said, is it 519? 
I can't be doing this shit. My favorite new joke. I love a 5.19 p.m. I I'm off work. I it all the time. Sorry, I can't do that. It's 5.19. 5.19. You don't want this life. I just finished work. It's 5.19. You try being an influencer for a day. You try being an day. influencer. She's back. She did a lengthy post on her return. She did, however, say she's taking a little break mm-hmm. for her mental health because this has been quite a doozy. But she basically said, yeah, that was a video from two years ago. I fucked up. Yeah, we talked about this. If you have no idea what we're talking oh, about. Oh, yes, that's right. It was last on the week on after the show. after show where we talk about things after, after the, the show. show over on patreon.com slash legends only. If that's you would right. like some bonus content, plenty of it and to directly support the podcast. It's like getting a second episode. Every it is like week. doing a second episode. Yeah, yeah. we so just if you want more, we'll we give just you ran, more. ramble. Yeah. After the show, we every talk. Week. But we did go into this in detail. We did. So if you're just catching up, she's a TikTok creator. She's a TikTok influencer. Mm -hmm. And she does makeup. And a a resurfaced video got her plenty of backlash for talking about for talking about how hard it is to be an influencer. It was a it was a fatal mistake that many influencers have made over the years of talking any sort of, you know, how hard their job is. It's always Mm -hmm. it's always deadly. But yeah. And resurfaced comments on Jacqueline Hill's Instagram. Yes. Yep. Yep. Where she said, I was this like, This shade is so <laughs> good. I was a hater. <laughs> I was jealous. I was insecure. I thought her response was fantastic. I thought so too. She can keep it moving. She doesn't have to go away. I understand that she would want to, but. Is she subscribed on Patreon? Because I feel like she literally she took, took all the our notes. advice. Yeah. Just keep it moving. We're human. Acknowledge it apologize complained about the job to the wrong people was a bitter hater in jacqueline hill's comments who among us hasn't who hasn't been? who hasn't who hasn't told her her hair her <laughs> lipsticks aren't hairy i haven't i mean no i love them but you know human we're we're glad to see her keep it moving we've got some other tiktok faves including a new one i know i have a new crush you guys all right new t kyle crush alert there Shigs. needs to be over Ugh. no i'm kidding never never um there needs to be a sound a t kyle crush sound crush of the week Ooh, uh, it's just t kyle's crush <laughs> hmm yeah. that should be a sound that should be oh it could we be get sued by <laughs> jennifer page i fucking love that top <laughs> that is the sound actually yeah so i have a new crush on tiktok but it's like not really um <laughs> there's this guy, his name is Max, and I don't know if this is how you pronounce it, but this is how it's spelled. Balek de. If you know, you know. I saw that, and I was like, "Is that a joke, or is that like?" You guys know is it? That? Yeah, okay. I don't know. I, I don't know because that is how that would that be. Balek de. B a l e b a l e g d e. Balek de. B i c t h, which is that little mix video. Mm-hmm. But he's just very funny, and he talks like this in his little crick crack crocs. <laughs> crick crack crocs. Yeah, he's like I'm crick crack crocking down the street. Crush of the week. He's very funny. Oh, he's funny. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He has very good skin too. Oh, there it is. I was like, what's that like? Four K. <laughs> God, how do these kids get away with this? I know. I know the clarity. Of I know those, the quality of these videos. I'm like, I'm really getting into your pores here. No, Jesus, can't relate. I want to be like an N64. <laughs> yeah, you know, like little polygon character, yeah. Filter. <laughs> you know, like when the characters, when like their arms Sharp, and legs aren't even connected faces. to their body, yeah, <laughs> they have really good jaw lines. Yes, yeah. yeah, that's what. Speaking I- of that reveal of what's his face on YouTube that just <gasps> happened. Yes, what's his? Did name? you guys see this? It was all over, all over the Twitter. Dream, dream. Thirty million reveal. followers. Yes, on YouTube with never showing his face. Finally did. Face crack of the century. Uh-huh. A lot, a lot of thoughts about his face. Yeah, people are so mean. People are so mean. People are mean. But also, the biggest thing that I took from this was, oh my God, there's so many people with 30 million followers who I have no idea who they are. Yeah. It's crazy. The fragmentation of fame is so wild. You can be so famous in so many circles, and nobody knows if you're walking down the street. Mm-hmm. I have no idea who that is. I mean, I think it says a lot if you're able to build a YouTube following yeah. off of your Minecraft videos Oh yeah, and yeah, never yeah. showing your face. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's the other thing is in this case, he's a t- uh, Minecraft player, so you're not even going to see the face. So. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting. Yeah. I wonder, did he say why he did it? A lot of gamers are like that. 
Yeah. They don't have face cam. They just play and do voiceovers. Yeah. I follow a couple people on YouTube that do that. Some and I'm like, I actually mind. have no idea what you look like. Interesting. I like the mystery. Maybe some people listening to this podcast have no idea what we look like because they don't follow us on social media. Yeah, certainly if you follow me, you would know because it's everywhere. But I feel like that must be a blessing. I I listen to some podcasts that I haven't actively sought out yeah. their social media. It's better that way. <laughs> yeah. Do not perceive me in any way other than this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that video has like 21 million views. That's crazy. When will your fave? Yeah. When will your fave reveal their new face? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we've got a, co- a collision of TikTok faves at the same time in Fashion Week in Paris at the Louis, Louis <laughs> Women's Wear. I don't even know how to. I thought it was just Lowe's. Louis like the, <laughs> like the Louis. Louis. <laughs> Um, how body met Charlie XCX and Charlie met up with Addison Ray and Addison Ray met up with Olivia Rodrigo. This is our metaverse. This is our Avengers. Yep. I mean, Olivia X Addison is really the, the Gen Z music shifters of their generation. Mm-hmm. Too powerful, too powerful. I also like this. Addison's had a narrative rewrite. Completely. Yep. If you think about the way she was treated on Fallon and the obsessed performance and the way people treated her as a TikToker then versus now, because she's sort of elusive, chanteuse, it's different. It's very different. It's very different. That's what happens when you're the hottest girl in pop. Everyone wants it. We're going to bully her to release <laughs> at least one new song, basically. We I, we got to get those songs back. I should say back. bully. I should say yeah, encourage she's had enough of it. and inspire. <laughs> We're going to encourage the fuck out of her <laughs> yeah. on social. <laughs> a bop uh, is a bop. A bop uh, is a bop is a bop to die for. Yeah. So <laughs> also on TikTok, there is a man named Roger Clay, who is also going viral for just singing songs. And yes. then people are taking his videos and then green screening, green screening them into these mashups like me at three in the morning. Yes. Yes. Me and my bestie on our way to Duncan. Yes. And Addison <laughs> duetted with him singing to die for. Yeah. My neck to die for my legs to die for this uh, uh, sex to die for. So she has acknowledged it again. She has acknowledged it again. Leaked unreleased. Kind of, this is kind of unprecedented at this point. Just like the sheer attention an unreleased song is getting that the artist is like acknowledging and everyone knows and everyone knows this song and it's just not up. It's not no. available. It's, it's also so weird to me because as we've seen, yeah, the, I hope this is the right word to use, but the desperation from labels and such mm-hmm. when they're trying to get their faves to Go take viral. off on tiktok and mm-hmm. it's like hello it's right here it's right here and everyone's She's just living it crickets yeah <laughs> like wait, uh, <laughs> it is fascinating yeah. to see yeah labels would die for that kind of promo yeah and she still only has one song you can listen to mm-hmm. pretty iconic yeah that's been one of the trends lately obviously to die for and then also super freaky girl has had its own life one thing about me is i i always swipe here Oh, I always listen. I can't. I can't do the bad rhymes and the bad rhythm. It's hard. Just tell your fucking story and let's go. Basically, the concept of this trend is you just take the back, the instrumental of Super Freaky Girl, and you tell a tale. And in a freak reverse Warholian, nothing, everything repeats itself trend, our own Bath and Body Works icon. AZ for Angela. AZ for Angela. I made a little remix. But the the way <laughs> she's resurged into pop culture, well, niche micro-influencer culture, is just like, wow, this stuff is just going to always like mm-hmm. regurgitate. Yeah, eight years after going viral, I think it is, her Bath and Body Works rants, it's become a thing. The girls are doing the lip-syncing along to it on the laptop. Yep. And then, of course, we had the T. Kyle super freaky remix yeah she kind of flopped my remix okay, but well, I, I have faith in her i have faith time. Sometimes that she will come these back things take a minute before they take off mm-hmm. 
But yeah, she all of a sudden got all the attention again. I saw two trends and I said one plus one (laughs) equals three. (laughs) And I combined the two. Yeah, you did. Give me my candles now. In Appleton, it's so good. It's a bop. It's a bop. It's It'll have its, its moment. Time. Clearly ahead of its time. We'll give time. it a moment. They'll find your remix in eight years. Hey. Hey. You never know. You don't. It's true. Because that is exactly what happened with this next segment. Truly the most unhinged week on t- on TikTok in a while. I. It's everywhere. If you're on the right side of TikTok. The best side of TikTok. Yes. And if you're not, follow us. We'll help you get there. Yes. Know your meme, everyone. <laughs> this is the Taste the Biscuit song. Taste the Biscuit. Slash Chrome Beach Biscuit Lady mm-hmm. is its official name. Uh, vacation Walk is the effect on TikTok. Vacation Walk is the wondering. effect. So this is like when we talk about the layers of internet knowledge you need to have. There's about four layers in this. So the Taste the Biscuit song... On first glance, if you watch the video of it, appears to be like a budget couple performing a song for real in like a, like it looks like a Goodwill or something. Yeah. In fact. Sears. Yes. So that is a faux duo named Toasters and Moose, originally featured in a 2010 Our comedy. Nicknames. Yes. <laughs> featured in a comedy called Chickens in the Shadows. Originally was uploaded in June 2011 on YouTube. The director had uploaded it and it already had life then because George Lopez found it. Billy Ray Cyrus was singing it on his show at that time. Like it became like a little trend a decade ago. But in the the latest iteration, somebody posted Taste the Biscuit, the performance that got viral. Then a user used the sound of the performance, the vacation walk filter, and created the Chrome Lady Beach Walk to taste the biscuit. (laughs) Then somebody else remixed Taste the Biscuit, and it became a different variation of the song. We've got new people, new Chrome ladies, Chrome people. Mm -hmm. We now have To Die For Taste the Biscuit. Yeah. (laughs) Biscuit talk is something else. It was like this grainy version of it yep yep then people found the hd version yes. on streaming yeah then they found the billy ray version <laughs> then they found the george lopez version then someone translated it into japanese then someone turned it into a disco anthem <laughs> then someone remixed it into toxic then someone remixed <laughs> it into it un- <laughs> into unholy <laughs> with sam smith and kim petrus and then someone took Addison Ray's To uh, Die For. Who did that? <laughs> and the biscuit to die for, <laughs> the honey sauce to die for. <laughs> so that one's going around too. Hmm, who could have done that? Hmm. I don't know, but they're a genius. They're a freaking genius. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> it's kind of taking off. As it should. Yeah. Yeah. It's this never ending thing that's just being built and built upon. And it's just this fascinating thing of like a meme becoming a meme over and over again. This has happened to them like it's several cupcake times. Energy. Yes, it is cupcake energy. Yep. But yeah, it all started in, and I haven't watched it, but now I want to a mockumentary. It's, it's giving um, best in show vibes, like a Christopher guest kind of movie of people like are a, saying it's funny. Yeah. It looks like a funny mockumentary. It's about this, reunion of a fictional 1970s duo and they finally land a gig in one scene where they play at a mall thrift store performing their original song taste the biscuit a sexy food song taste the honey sauce Sauce. don't get your honey sauce on me one of my favorites like the way it looks on my chicken wings (laughs) one of my favorites was this uh woman who was like she tested her husband to see if she if he was on Biscuit Talk. Did you see that? No. She just put up a camera and she made a meal and she's like, oh, can you taste the biscuit? And he's like, yeah, it's good. And he's like, yeah, with the, <laughs> the honey sauce, right? Like She kept using the lyrics and he was like, yeah, no, it's good. So he failed the test, but she like tested to see if he was on Biscuit Talk. He will be now. He will be now. I love it. It's also one of those things where... It looks so real that many people thought this was a real performance. I thought they were real. Definitely at the beginning. It it really seems real. It's a sign of a good comedy. They've signed up for 
TikTok now. I saw that. Um, oh, yes. I saw the director. Which did. one's toast and which one's moose? Yeah. I don't know which one's which, actually. But I saw that they did. The director did. They actually filmed a 10-year faux anniversary video in 2019. They did a uh, another performance of Taste of the Biscuit. And, I mean, yeah, this is just the cycle repeats. What's next? Like, shoes, Kelly? Like, that must be next. Ooh. I feel like that's probably... Almost had a little bit of a moment there. Yeah. Because he did some spawn con for something. He I did. forget what. Yeah. There's that. I just think of the early relics of meme. Was the dancing Ally McBeal baby? Like, I just think these things keep resurfacing. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm here for your remix and I remashed will take needs. two random trends and merge them into one to become one. I feel like that's my niche. Mixing and mashing memes. Between two talks. Yeah. Yeah. Between two talks. We have Addison Ray to die for talk. Yeah. And then we have Taste the Biscuit talk. And yeah. I combine them. No, it's super a, freaky girl talk. That's a niche. Bath and Body Works talk combined. I like that idea for you. Mm-hmm. Well, we also have Layers. some new things to talk about this week as well. Well, some. A little bit. Yeah. Some like actual music from, right. you know, Music that you can listen to on streaming. <laughs> know what you can't listen to on streaming? What? Free Me by Emma Bunton. Trust me, this has been my plight for years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Emma's Free Me is not on streaming. It's no. terrible. We need to violently encourage her to get it on streaming. <laughs> <laughs> Free Me Talk. Free Emma me Bunton talk. talk. I have one new song to recommend this week okay. by an artist that I've mentioned before, Bad Tuner. There's uh-huh. a song called no peace it is a chill house bop so good which is exactly what i felt all week because of biscuit talk yeah no peace it's a vibe nice vibe talk we love that mm-hmm. i have some album recommendations this week at last we have the debut of shy girl her album nymph is out get into that it's a sexy autumnal vibe late night vibes hot girl shy girl yes 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 Get into that. Also get into the Bjork album, If You Dare. Uh, that is an experience. Um, Bjork. The Bjork album, Fosora, is out now, including smashes like <laughs> Fadjert or E. Sorry, Fjordum. what did you just call me? That's what she called us. <laughs> <laughs> Fungal Let's City. Let's talk about the F word. Mm-hmm. Fungal City. Fungal City, which is um, the the locker room at Blink Fitness. <laughs> <laughs> and Sorrowful Soil, which is what happens when I don't remember to water my plants. But this is a mushroom acid trip album vibe. Not for the faint of heart, but it actually makes sense as a body of work together. It's obtuse, but also... It's Bjork. Obtuse. Obtuse. Shout Isn't out to, obtuse a type of triangle? Uh, uh, um, the, yes. From geometry? Yes. Yeah. See, I am smart, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one subject in school I was brilliant at, was geometry. I don't know what that means, but I was so good at it. Really into shapes. Mm-hmm. Makes sense logic i feel you know yeah just that one yeah <laughs> curriculum geometry and e equals mc squared <laughs> <laughs> the only subjects in school that i was good at <laughs> god also shout out to the yeah yeah yes yeah yeah <laughs> yeah um they're back for the oh, first yeah <laughs> i really want to do one of those tiktoks out loud in public Oh, I think you should. Yeah. Oh, I started a TikTok for us, by the way. Yes, I saw that. Surprise. That is official. I'm ready. I'm ready. If you see at legends only underscore pod on TikTok, that is a fish. There's just no official. content yet. Yes. There but I want to do the like, what are you listening to? Yeah. The, um, excuse me, do you speak English? And they're like, a little. Uh-huh. Can I take your photo? So good. Anyway, there's a lot. It's raining though. Yeah. Next time. We'll get there. Anyway, Yeah Yeah Yeahs have an album called Cool It Down. They're first in almost a decade. Shout out to the song Wolf. I'm obsessed with that. And shout out to Karen O in general for being a legend. I had such an attachment actually to the Yeah Yeah Yeahs back in the day. My ex 
was a big yeah yeah yes stan so that's why i have my edgy side <laughs> <laughs> yeah my ex introduced me to like peaches yeah yeah yes electro clash all that stuff so while i was sparkly danny minogue and britney i would be introduced to like cool music Slam. rock i like to rock out <laughs> Went and from yeah, yeah, yeah to bye, bye, bye. From yeah, yeah, yeah to <laughs> CCC. <laughs> we need to talk about Legentina. To XXX. <laughs> La Luz. Legentina Gardilera is here with the continuation of the Legentina and Espanol era with La Luz and seven, siete Latin Grammy nominations. Which is difficult to get. Not everybody has that. Not everybody. So we also got a stunning performance of La Reina. And yeah, it's been a... And the, actually, that was a high fashion moment. That outfit, the red, tits oh, out. Yeah. Tits out and the The whole braids. era has been... Fabulous. Yeah. She's really feeling her oats in Espanol. So we love to see it. La oats. <laughs> Oh, God, I'm going to get canceled for saying that. La Oats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, what do we have around the corner? Anything La to look forward to? La <laughs> Anyway, canceled. <laughs> oh, my God. Anything to look forward to? Yes, we have. No. <laughs> <laughs> Kygo it's... on Thursday. I'm so excited. Kygo on Thursday. It's October. We have midnights. We have the loneliest hour, season, Time. time. Love joy Midnight's space. is actually ruining my perception of the loneliest time because I'm thinking of midnights and hours. She is fucking it up. Taylor needed to plan a different release day. Uh, we've got the Mega Trainer album, obviously. We're all perched for that. And we've got, I don't know, award shows are coming, I think. Halloween. Halloween, yes. We've got no ideas what we're doing yet. No. We'll figure that out. I have ideas, but no plans. I have neither. And I'm ready to go. It's getting colder. It's chillier. Tis the season. It really did get so cold so fast. Yeah. Bring a sweater. Bring your know coat. how I kind of feel about Halloween? How? That Benny drama reel about the Chromatica ball. Uh-huh. That's how I feel But with Halloween. It's extremely those I'm like, vibes. where am I going and how am I getting there? Because it's gonna if I'm be... going to look like this. Yeah. <laughs> do I want to be in public? Yeah. Do I, you know what I'm saying? No, I know what you, I, I know what you're saying. And then I was like looking at sweaters and I was like, if I get a boob plate, would it fit in the oh sweater? God, not that. And if it doesn't, yeah. what if no one gets it? And then what are people going to say if they just see a Chucky doll walking around in tits? Just another normal Thursday <laughs> in the city, in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> it's another Friday night. <laughs> I haven't figured it out yet. We'll figure it out. Well, everyone, we hope that you're having a lovely autumnal season day sweater weather sweater weather light a candle i have one going over there it's amber fires oh actually i blew it out because it's a woodwick so it was making noise oh um (laughs) not sponsored amber fireside (laughs) and yeah we'll uh catch you if you're a patreon subscriber on the after show where we have some thoughts about some television and movies oh yeah we're going into a deep dive yeah tv and movies discourse because some of us have seen something for the first time at last after <gasps> lots of badgering. What could it be? What could it be? You'll have to wait and, and see. see. <laughs> <laughs> yes, everyone. Shout out to all of our Patreon subscribers for supporting us. Yeah. You're going to get another episode after the show. And yeah, we'll catch you real soon. <laughs> Until next week, we will see you soon with the honey sauce. Taste the biscuit. Taste the sweetness of the podcast. I need to come up with something like that. Yeah. That is so bad that it's good. Something there. There's something there. <sighs> Maybe I'll get inspired at Kygo. Taste the biscuit vocal chop remix incoming. <laughs> <laughs> 